I'm here at Mike's Mana, and we're going to talk about some mushrooms. <laughs> So tell me, this one is what? Pia Pino. All right, Pia Pino. And then what is this? Chestnut. Chestnut, okay. This is something you can actually do. Take two of these plates. You can make it into liquid culture, into jars, into grain spawn, into mushroom blocks. And you can generate two agar plates, one million pounds of mushrooms in 80 something days. If you have the right equipment, and the right that's right, you have everything. So after reading that, that's kind of what really got me to do something. Like if I can do a fraction of that. Yeah. Wow. Here's some of the genetics. A lot of them are ordered. A lot of them we found in the wild. My partners are great at sourcing these types of things as well. Um, here's some more slants. That's how you store everything. Then put them in the fridge for long term. This it was quite the room to be into. This is where everything gets started. Like Drew was explaining that he has some of the things that he orders or he harvests from the, the wild. And this is where everything starts to grow in this room where he can start to bag things so that they can go into the next room. This was very interesting to see how everything gets started and how things start to grow in a sterile environment. So this is grain spawn? That's right. Okay. These are grain spawns that we make. And they look like um, sunflower seeds. And if you see there. something wrong in them, like a little spot, sometimes there might be a contamination that have to be removed from here. It's really? a very constant process. You have typically between seven to eight, ten percent contamination rate. Okay. So, and what kind of mushrooms will these propagate? Is that the right word? That's anoki, and okay. um, that's the golden anoki. They're long, skinny. Okay. The Asian variety is like white anoki. I'm sure you've seen those at the store. Those oh, are Chinese varieties. Yes. Okay. All right, and that's what they will grow from these seeds. 
That's right. They're, these grains are sterilized in the autoclave, and then they're inoculated with another grain or with a culture or an agar plate. Okay. So we've been doing freeze-dried mushrooms and we're going to market that. It's What it does is it maintains your compounds in your mushrooms a lot more than just dehydrating. Okay. Wow. That's really great. And then when you want to reconstitute it, you just add water? Yes, some people take the lion's mane that's freeze-dried and make tinctures with it. So a lot of people have requested lion's mane in bulk. And if we do it freeze-dried, you know, that's obviously... And how long will it take to freeze-dry something like that? We've done a few batches, which are usually about 24 hours. Okay. Wow. Great. So in the fruiting room, you had to wear a mask. So right. tell me why you did that. Well, there's a lot of spores in the air in here. Whenever they fruit, as soon as they're right at about at their peak, they're going to release a lot of spores. Okay. And if you don't wear a mask, it can develop pretty serious lung issues. Okay, so they actually be in your lungs. Okay. They, they like coat the inside of your lungs. Wow. And you develop like a really bad cough and everything. It's okay. So as you can see, we got to see some really beautiful mushrooms as we walked through this room. I had to wear a mask and so did Drew. So it was really hard to talk and understand what we were saying throughout the room. So I figured I would just come back and let you just enjoy some of these beautiful, beautiful pictures. To be a mushroom grower, you pretty much have to be able to be a problem solver. That's the bottom line. If you, if you find contamination in your grows, which you have seen some in here, and guess what? You have to find where does it come from. <laughs> You're fighting something that you can't see. Right? It's a contaminant. It's in the air. Right? You can't see it. So you don't know if it's coming from your lab. You don't know if it's coming from your brain spawn. Sometimes if there's too much bugs, they can transfer from one block to another. There's a lot of variables. There's right. a lot of airflow in there. Uh, you have to have your timer set with your exhaust to compensate your air condition, your humidity. They all have to be dialed perfectly to make it. And all mushroom species are not the same. That some prefer more humid, some prefer you know less. You know, it's just a lot of people have two fruiting rooms. One's a high humidity, one's a low humidity. Oh wow! So it's really in this fruit room, it's not 100% dialed in. It, it, it's it's we're going to have to get a few more pieces of equipment to make it perfect. Okay, that's great though. So from the beginning, now I know each species is different, but from the beginning spore to harvest going to market, how long for a typical oyster? Oysters are very fast. Okay. Um, so if you have a look at culture, you can get it to jump on grain within a few days. About three or four days it will take off. Day five or six Maybe day five to eight, you shake it. If it's not fully colonized, it'll be colonized in 10 days. You put that on a block. That block will colonize in a week. Wow. So, okay, so as soon as it's colonized. Two weeks. I'd say as soon as you start seeing pens, about two and a half weeks in. Wow. But, and then uh, some oysters fruit faster than others. Okay. I have some that you cut the block and they're fruiting in 24 hours. You, you come out and there's pens coming out. So, Drew, tell me, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you? You can contact my Instagram. It's Mike's Mushroom Mana. Make sure you put the mushroom in the middle, otherwise it's harder to find. Okay. And...